there'll be those who will not look beyond the picture of me shaking hands with a Klansman in a robe and hood. And of course, they'll have that visceral reaction like, what the hell is going on here? It is something yep. we never see. A black man attending KKK rallies where crosses are burning and racist views are being spewed. Some of their beliefs are that African Americans, black people, are born with smaller brains, that we are, we are inherently lazy, uh, we are inherently prone to crime, um, raping people, especially white women. Despite that offensive ideology, Daryl Davis has spent decades befriending members of the Ku Klux Klan. So the first time I heard of this guy was in a documentary called Accidental Courtesy. And I have to say that I was just blown away by what I saw. You know, here you have this black guy who's sitting down with white supremacists and having this conversation with them, you know, becoming their friends, right? And that friendship eventually convinces them to leave the KKK. I would say the vast majority of people would not be willing to sit down with a white supremacist and have a conversation with them, right? The, I think the assumption is that they're beyond the pale, that you can't really reason with them, and so there's really no point. How do you talk to someone when someone's calling you the N-word? Because you take the higher road. You know who you are. There is one question Daryl has repeatedly asked members of the Klan. How can you hate me? when you don't even know me. They've never had an answer that they can come up with that justifies how they can hate me. Now, they may not know him as an individual, but they know him as a black person, right? So they believe that he embodies these stereotypes of black people. I suspect that's what they say. His conversations with Klansmen resulted in something Daryl never expected. I would find things in common. And if, as I began to build on those commonalities, the things that we had in contrast as trivial as skin color began to matter less and less. So I think what he's saying is true and is very powerful, right? So even for somebody like him and a white supremacist, there are commonalities. There are perhaps shared interests or shared beliefs, right? And if you could find those commonalities, then you can build a relationship. And as I built upon those commonalities, a relationship was formed. In the last 30 years, Daryl says 200 members across the country have left the KKK as a direct result of his involvement. He was very vicious, very violent, and very racist. But at the very end, he said that he respected me. Many of those who've left have given Daryl their robes and hoods. He keeps them in his home. It's a journey that is documented in the film Accidental Courtesy. I consider Frank to be my friend. I consider Daryl to be my friend as well. What do you think about Wow, that's just so amazing to me. In my experience, the best way to change someone's mind is by first becoming their friend, right? People are more open to hearing different opinions if those opinions come from people who they like, right? I think that makes a lot of sense. That uh, rings true to me. So I think the example that he's setting is a very powerful one, right? How are we going to change someone else's mind? If this other person thinks something so wrong and evil as something like white supremacy, okay? Um, but, but it doesn't even have to be about that. It could be something else. Let's just say this other person believes something very different than what I believe. How do I change that other person's mind? Do I change that other person's mind by calling them names, right? Do I insult them, right? No, you don't do it that way, right? You try to build a relationship. You try to be their friend, right? That is the way to change people's minds. Daryl believes the only way to end racism is to confront it head on. Progress is made when you, when you put somebody, give somebody a platform where they can express their views, even if you don't agree with them. When so I'm also a strong supporter of free speech, and I like the fact that he is also a strong supporter of free speech. I would say that Daryl Davis is probably one of my role models. I really do look up to the way that he builds relationships with other people. So one thing that we should remember is that people are going to continue to believe what they believe if their beliefs are not challenged, right? If they don't hear an objection or a good argument against their belief, then they're going to continue to believe that, you know, whites are the superior race, right? So in order for you to kind of bring up those objections, you have to have that dialogue with them. You have to be able and willing to sit down and discuss the issue. When two enemies are talking, they're not fighting. They're talking. It's when the talking ceases that the ground becomes fertile for violence. I think this is a really important point. 
if you think the other side is so unreasonable that it's a waste of time to talk to them, right, then it's more likely that you are going to fight them, right? And I don't think that's ideal. Rather than fighting them, why not change their minds? Because people are willing to change their minds. If this guy can convince KKK members to leave the KKK, that means that you and I can change other people's minds. All right, I'm going to end it here. I hope you found it interesting, and I'll see you next time.